Well, exercise definitely helps that downward spiral because you sort of think, oh, I can't do all these things. Whereas going for walks, it's a simple thing. You can go fast or slow, but whenever you come back, you just feel so good. And so it puts you in such a much better frame of mind. People think of strength or fitness, that capacity to get our breathing and normalising how we're moving and helping us to relax and just tune into the important other benefits that often people experience out of exercise can be really powerful. At first it was really hard to to accept that with movement I'd have pain but without movement I'd have even more pain and I had to push through that and I had to stop doing things like I'd been taught to for instance when I unloaded the dishwasher to suck up my pelvic floor to brace myself, to bend slowly and to sort of reach into the dishwasher and pull out the dish. I had to retrain my brain that you bend forward, relax, take a deep breath, relax, bend forward, pick up the plate and put it on the counter. It's very hard to make that mental leap because you've got all these inbuilt protections and I was protecting myself the pain was going up, my anxiety was going up, my worrying was going up, I was protecting myself more, moving less, pain was going up. As a GP, I always emphasise every time how important exercise is. Movement is the enemy of pain. I also ask patients to look into how they can move more at work. Can they use a sit-stand desk? Can they get up on the hour, once an hour, walk across the office, get themselves a cup of water, walk back again. Can they do their stretching exercises? When they're seated at a computer, can they move their core muscles? Can they strengthen their core muscles? Can they adopt their posture regularly, adopt postural change regularly to ease their pain and prevent the pain coming on in the first place? And basically exercise throughout the day. Obviously when I'm stressed, my body tense up, my pain level goes up. So um, by staying fit, uh, staying um, active, you know, I'm happy. You know, like, yeah, exercise is very good for managing your mood. It's, just, it's, a, it's a form of stress relief. If you have other pains or other issues that are likely to be barriers or you feel are barriers to you exercising, the secret is really trying to work out ways around that because there's lots of different modes of exercise. So exercise alone is really important, but it's not one type of exercise. There's pool or water-based exercise, which can be helpful. There's walking, there's cycling, there's gym-based exercise. There's a heap of other options as well, like yoga, for example. So people will be better matched to different types of exercise. The exercise I do every day, I do, as well as the stretches, I do weights, I'm back doing weights again, Not so much, I won't do it as much as I did before and I'm, I'm, I go to boxing on the weekends as well. Um, I, like the neurosurgeon said I would never run again, you know, I'm doing everything, I'm getting punched in the head every Saturday, you know, um, it's good and it's good. Not all exercise needs to be expensive or involved a structured program, it can be really simple and if you're struggling, having a, a simple win like taking your dog out for a walk or going for a walk with a family member, something really basic and easy that fits around what you're coping with at the time can be a great start. And of course, from there, you want to build up as is appropriate for your problem. Goals to get better are really good. Um, they set like little benchmarks to sort of push towards. I found if I didn't have a goal, I wouldn't be motivated to do anything. And that was the same with freediving the gym or just getting better generally like around the house doing stretches because if I didn't have the goals I wouldn't have got off my ass off the chair I'd have been stuck there doing nothing and that's where people fall into a deeper depression. The movement part is really to kind of desensitize the system relax your body and get the capacity to move and then taking someone from that back into the things that they love that's the journey that we would would tend to take someone on. There's good evidence that physical activity is really helpful with sleep, it's helpful with relaxation, uh, it's helpful with your mental health, your ability to concentrate. They call it the poly pill because it's got great effects across all systems. Uh, it makes you feel good, uh, but it doesn't have bad side effects. You just got to make sure you 
set it gradually and build it up. 